I once did a story on gay skeletons found in a Titanic life ring, which is... What the hell is that? That makes no sense. <laughs> If you were like me in the 90s and you weren't lucky enough to stay in the car while your mom went grocery shopping, you got to know the layout of the store pretty well. You knew where the cereal aisle was because one day she might just let you get a box of cookie crisp. Oh, this sucks. Maybe there was a small toy aisle filled with shit toys like knockoff G.I. Joes and magic grow capsules. Or if you were lucky like I was, you could scrounge up some quarters and play Street Fighter 2 for uh, about five minutes. After what seems like an eternity, you stroll down every aisle looking for your mom, and off to the checkout you go. Filled with disappointment in the five pound bag of off-brand Captain Crunch she bought, no toys, and getting your ass kicked in Street Fighter because you thought it was a good idea to be Blanca, you lose. your eyes begin to wander, looking for just one last minute thing to beg your mom for. While your groceries are being bagged, something catches your eye amongst the Food Digest and Soap Opera magazines. The sound of the checkout scanner fades as your eyes lock on the most puzzling and possibly biggest news story you have ever seen. Aliens back. Clinton. As you stare at the photos of Bill Clinton shaking the hand of an alien, you begin to wonder, why haven't I heard of this? Why is everyone acting so calmly in the store? And most importantly, did I just shit my pants? I got a bowl of chocolate pudding in my underpants. So who is responsible for this mind-blowing breaking news? Well, that would be the Weekly World News. Once exposed to the Weekly World News, it becomes hard to shake the feeling that maybe the world is a weirder place than you were told. Oh shit, a boy with two brains. The Dead Sea Scrolls reveal the future. Ooh, the winning lotto numbers, mom. Then your soul becomes crushed as you hear the phrase for the first time in your life, fake news. You are fake news. In the year 2020, we've become accustomed to hearing the phrase fake news usually from people trying to discredit legitimate facts that don't agree with their worldviews. I'm not going to get political. Mm -mm. Nope. Most of you have heard of another satirical publication, The Onion, and you have to admit their headlines these days hit a little too close to home. But the Weekly World News was absolutely batshit crazy. In 1979, Generoso Pope Jr. launched the Weekly World News alongside his right-wing populist tabloid, The National Enquirer. Published in Lantana, Florida before moving to Boca Raton in the late 90s, the Weekly World News was, at its peak, publishing 1.2 million copies in issue. In the beginning, much like the National Enquirer, Weekly World News would focus on celebrity gossip and reworked weird stories from across the globe. Weekly World News editor and former White House correspondent... Is it, am I reading that right? Okay. Uh... <laughs> About 80% of the stories were clipped from newspapers. We had three or four clippers who were surrounded by mountains of newspapers. We spent the day looking at newspapers throughout the world and just clipping weird stories. People narrowly escaping death, someone falling off a cliff, or hanging off a tree branch for four days until they were rescued. We would write the story and put in a splashy headline. Most stories were very true and accurate. So what was the turning point? How did the Weekly World News go from celebrity gossip and strange but true news stories to this? Editor-in-chief Ian Calder describes the change this way. It slowly morphed into that. It didn't change overnight. The paper wasn't able to get fantastic stories from clippings, and so it slowly used less and less stuff from other newspapers and became more about things from the minds of the editors. Keeping a tab on sales, they realized they made more money by getting away from celebrity gossip and differentiating themselves with bigger and bolder headlines. The tabloid began running articles with reoccurring themes such as Loch Ness monster sightings, Elvis sightings, and of course stories on the infamous Bat Boy. Or is it, is it Bat Child? Mm. Despite these themes, they claimed to always print the truth. But as you can tell by some of these headlines, these stories had a comedic bend to them. Eventually, though, due to too many instances of people believing outlandish claims published in the paper, Weekly World News started issuing a statement in 2004 that readers should suspend disbelief for the sake of enjoyment. Aww. One of the most consistent types of stories the Weekly World News was known for was 
future predictions. In this copy that I own from April 1996, we see the Dead Scrolls reveal the future, which includes the economic boom of 1996, Jesus Christ returning to Earth, and the exact day the world will end. While it is safe to say that the economic boom in 1996 did indeed happen, it was not the promised, quote, benefit for every man, woman, and child on the planet. Instead, it was a moderate percentage of growth likely due to the sale of baby tees, the launch of CKB, and aggressive Looney Tunes shirts. And if Jesus Christ had returned to Earth, he's been, well, pretty quiet, likely living out his days trying to figure out what to watch on Netflix. Yo, Jesus, pick something. The biggest and perhaps the most terrifying prediction is, well, when the world will end. And according to the Weekly World News, it will be September 4th, 2025. I uh, wouldn't put too much faith in that though, as it has been predicted many times before during the 90s. While it is safe to assume that most people would regard these news stories as entertainment even before the added statement to suspend disbelief, the Weekly World News certainly gained attention by the more hysterical members of our population. In 2010, Fox and Friends reported that the Los Angeles Police Department had purchased 10,000 jetpacks for their officers for the low price of $1 billion. One billion, gajillion, fifillion, shabadoolillion. Austin Path. The city of Los Angeles already ordering 10,000 jetpacks for its police, paramedics, and fire departments. Are you kidding? Can we afford that? Uh, the jetpack can fly up to 63 miles per hour and get as high as 8,000 feet in the air. That story, however, was false and one created by the Weekly World News. It's understandable that in the 90s, fact-checking stories you've read was eh, a bit more difficult, and sensationalist headlines were attention-grabbing. As crazy as it may seem, Weekly World News did in fact run some news stories that were true over the years, such as a story about Hogzilla in Georgia, a skydiver learning mid-air that he forgot his parachute, and a woman bursting into flames during an operation. Although I am inclined to believe that this story is true too. Editors and writers at the Weekly World News have stated that some themes did better than others. According to Paul Cooperberg, the heaven and hell stuff was strong. Things discovered in the Titanic were also pretty good and coming disasters and an apocalypse of some sort, giant monsters. C. Michael Forsyth, a writer from 1996 to 2005 said, I once did a story on gay skeletons found in a Titanic life ring, which is, what the hell is that? That makes no sense. But I wrote it, and people said it was actually quite touching. The sailors dying in each other's arms. The Weekly World News was, in most cases, a true example of fake news. Attention-grabbing headlines, semi-convincing articles, and creative pictures, it was, it was meant to be entertaining. In the 90s, it was a staple of grocery store checkout stands and didn't cause too much controversy. Although I'm sure more than one person has argued with their uncle about the validity of the story they read in the Weekly World News. Now it becomes harder and harder to spot fake news. Whether that's due to our short attention spans, inability to use logic and critical thinking skills, or just the overabundance of information aimed at exhausting us until the next outrage-inducing story breaks. Whatever the case may be, one thing I know for sure, I miss the simple days of fake news in the 90s. If you're a collector like me, I highly suggest picking up some issues of Weekly World News from eBay, stashing them away in a box and confusing your grandchildren in the future. Thank you for watching this episode of I Miss the 90s on the Weekly World News. I'm your host, Mike O'Connor. Thanks.